Glenn, good to see you today. Appreciate you taking some time. Uh, I am Prayson Pate, CTO for the Ensemble Division of ADVA, and through ADVA and Overture before that, I've been working with Verizon for a long time, so I look forward to hearing some of your thoughts on how we can apply some of these technologies to the, to the telco network. You bet. I think that's a very timely topic. So let's, uh, let's, first of all, I think we ought to define which part we're trying to attack today so that we put it in the right context. Well, the, there's a lot of talk about SD and NFE. Operators have seen the benefits of all these technologies in the cloud, but as we both know, the cloud is not the telco network. Right. In the telco environment, excuse me, in the cloud environment, all the equipment is co-located the latency is short, bandwidth is high, and resources are fungible. You can replace one server with another server. That is not true in the telco network. You have a lot more issues to solve, not the least of which is how do you handle the resiliency that customers have come to expect. So what are the things that you're looking at yeah. to address those? Resiliency and timelines. That's the other part that we, you know, you can design a data center, you engineer it, you build it, and then you can do the, op the next one differently. You don't have to do them all the same. The network takes three to five years to build, another three to five years to exhaust, and during that time you want to make maximum utilization of it. So it changes a lot over the period of that life cycle where a data center doesn't necessarily have to. The next one can be can take advantage of the new thing. Here we need to introduce those new things over the life cycle. So we are, we are putting a lot more thought into that, and we're trying to take advantage of everything we're learning inside of the data center and that others are learning. You know, the Web 2.0 guys are doing on the bleeding edge. We're saying, well, we'd be happy to take advantage of anything we can but then make sure it applies to a telephony network, to a, a carrier network, and still maintain all of our carrier grade requirements. Well, that's, that's really interesting. You talked about the, the data centers. Now, Verizon's made some statements about moving away from the data center a little bit, but clearly data center and cloud is a fundamental part of what's driving all this demand. So how do you balance being able to connect to data centers, service data center, cloud traffic, with running your network and maintaining your focus? Right, the, the goal is to virtualize anything we can in our own data center. So doing it more or less for ourselves and for our traffic and to optimize our network and to pull things together as opposed to selling that as a service. There are some folks out there that are really, really big that sell it as a service and they're good at it. And uh, you know, we may not be as competitive as we should be. There are other things that we can do as far as distributing stuff further because we've got a distributed network today that if we can move services closer to the customer and we can virtualize what we can, take advantage again. Anytime we can put it into general compute, we will. It's cheaper, and if the performance is sufficient, we will do that. But then there's lots of other network elements, as you know, that are purpose-built, and we're trying to figure out how to optimize them, how to take advantage of SDN control and NFB functionality to optimize the underlying infrastructure. Well, let me challenge you a little bit on that, because if you look at the, the core transport, the, you're not going to virtualize that, but you do want to bring some of these principles of SDN and automation mm -hmm. to bear. So having the suppliers bring to you a solution that is no longer a closed solution controlled by their own EMS or NMS to one that is built on open frameworks, perhaps ONOS or open daylight, that allows you to plug in components and unite with other parts of, their, of your network. Isn't that a little different way of working than a, a fully closed vertical solution? Uh, it is different. Again, different requirements, but we're buying equipment from the same people. So we, tra we need to work with them. You know, this is the traditional suppliers. We need to work with them, building those requirements. Today we're saying, can we have that open interface northbound out of that EMS or domain controller as a way to, to get there quicker than saying, nope, I got to have that to every single network element before I can do anything. That same uh, principle that we talked about earlier, we will never get there. If we're saying, just abstract your network from a northbound interface, give me open commands that I can perhaps load new, new uh, side controllers on, or I can go buy third-party software or develop it myself, and use that to work through your EMS, your network controller, that seems to have a lot of merit. We believe we can get there a lot quicker, and that is a change for the systems. I mean, the, the uh, equipment manufacturer too, but they seem to embrace that a lot better than they do, I need to somehow push that down to every single piece of my network because, A, that's a long, a lot of work for them. Most of those are very proprietary today. We're saying, okay, you can keep it proprietary, but you just need to open it up on the, on the northbound, keep the southbound, anything you want. Do you see a need to change your existing OSS and BSS systems to be able to support these new innovative and dynamic services? We are, uh, we are, and uh, or we do, and, and we're, the way that we're handling that, for instance, is moving away from a lot of the embedded Telcordia, Osmium processes that 
that have had us locked into touching to every network element with TL1 only, and you can't introduce anything new, and uh, uh, certainly getting something done takes a long time. We're looking at different back office or OSS structures that would allow us to be more nimble, developing or using DevOps to work with the suppliers as that software is coming online, even prior to the network element being fully developed or GA'd. This is uh, all new for us, and, and we're embracing it and trying to introduce it today, actually. Well, one interesting bit of history, we, we actually did some work with Verizon years ago where we had a new network element that was coming in and we put it into the office over in Cary and did some IT integration before the thing would even pass data. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, a, that's an interesting way to, to work, solving the, the IT or operations or automation aspect even before you get to the to the data path, yep. which in truth is, is relatively easy to, to, to verify. You guys have already done it, right? The equipment <laughs> manufacturers have emulated that network element yes. before they finish the hardware. We want to get and partner with you, again, partnering with the same people, but going to our IT folks, your IT folks, pulling the OSS structure together so that when we're done, when you finally do get the GA hardware, it's been tested through the maintenance engineering lab, all of it comes together in the same time frame rather than only doing that IT work afterwards, which is the way we've traditionally done it. So with these new services that you're going to be coming out, what is the, what is the pitch for the customer? What, what's in it for them to pick you over somebody else? What, what, what are you going to be able to offer that's new and different? I mean, it's mostly agility, service agility, and the ability to bring things, A, to market quicker so that we've got shorter timelines, shorter deliverables. Um, that's always, I mean, of interest to them and to us, of course. Um, but also when new things come around that, you know, you don't have to wait two years for Verizon to introduce that, we can bring it to market just as fast as anybody else can at a, at a higher scale. You know, that's one of the things that we always, we're always going to leverage the network from a scalability and reliability, but service uh, acceleration is something that we're trying to work in. Do you see exposing some of those APIs to your customers to give them more dynamic configuration of network as a service? We do. We, uh, we do it already today on some of our packet services where we allow them effectively a bandwidth on demand. It's more of a scheduling uh, bandwidth, so you have to know a bit ahead of time. You know, it can't be all done in, in, on the drop of a hat, but it can be done pretty quickly. We're introducing that today, or we have that today on the packet side. We're introducing that next year on the, on the transport piece of the network. We're trying it in some trials earlier and uh, working out the bugs, but it's for internal use. But I think that's an, an a, giving a portal to the customer, one that's already, you know, a customer of ours, so that they can take advantage of some of their own, uh, or, or do some of their own management. An interesting service that some people are looking at, some end users are looking at, is SD-WAN. And they see it as a way to get lower cost private networks than, than MPLS VPNs, which is the bread and butter of, of many operators. It was a little surprising to see when Verizon came out and was offering SD-WAN as a supported service to, to your customers. So speak a little bit about that. And also another interesting point is that a lot of the cost of a MPLS network, an RFC 2547 VPN, is actually the service that goes in terms of supporting it. And when people move away from a, a, a tier one operator like Verizon, they're also moving away from that service. Do you think people understand that? I don't think they understand that, but I think they'll learn it pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's usually the first outage, and the guy says, what do you mean we're doing it ourselves? Uh, you know, we're a Do car company, or we're a bank, or we're whatever. Right. Uh, that's our core business. Go get those Verizon guys to do it, or, or a carrier to do it. And I think that's what, that's what we can bring to the table, is that, that carrier-grade mentality, but still the service agility that perhaps we weren't providing to them earlier. You know, we weren't giving them those tools that they would like to have. I think the best of both worlds would be allowing them to uh, use the network in a fashion that they would like to, so replacing their enterprise, giving them all of the, the value they would like to have, but still that somebody else has got their, got their back as far as making sure it's always up and, and re available for them. People often see the savings that they can get. They don't understand what they're giving up. Yeah. <laughs> and that savings is also questionable. You know, after you go out and you, because you have to invest a lot in that infrastructure in order to get some of those savings, and then you have to keep upgrading it. You know, this is, again, a, a, a network isn't a static thing. I mean, it's continuously have to do technology uplifts in order to keep it current. And that's one thing I, I believe they also leave out in their business case is, well, gee, I need to upgrade this every year and I need to continue to develop new tools. And if I'm the only one doing them or if I can only share it amongst myself, then I'm not going to get the economies of scale that a carrier could provide. Another thing that people don't understand is the need for fiber 
we 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 were just talking about how with the advent of a lot more wireless access that people view that as the, the death of, of connectivity or death of wireline connectivity when in truth it's just driving more and more demand yeah. for that because we can't we can't virtualize a fiber. Yeah. At some point you've got to fire up the trencher or go buy some more spectrum. Exactly. And the uh, Fiber deeper into the network is is something that the 5G will drive. 4G already is, or small cells. Um, fiber to the home. You know, this is something that that for us anyway, we we cover 18 plus million homes today. So we understand what deep fiber means, and we're using that out of footprint as well to try and get to our cell towers. Today we're 90 plus, 95 percent plus lit with fiber, and that is, um, you know, it, it's required for the bandwidths that are needed. Uh, not that radio you can use in some remote areas, but for the most part, you need it for the bandwidth, you need it for the reliability, you need it for the low latency, then you just home those small cells that you put in in densification to those macro cells, use it as a hub site. So the, the amount of fiber um, is continuing to grow rapidly, and, and the amount of transport equipment needed to support that is growing rapidly, but it also is uh, still manageable, if you ask me, because uh, bandwidth to the home is, is much higher or bandwidth to the tall, shiny building is still much higher than it is to a cell tower. And at the same time, some of these new technologies lend themselves to fixed wireless so that as you push fiber deeper and deeper into the network, you can close that last 100 feet, 200 feet, whatever it is, with a high bandwidth, agile connection and get the best of both worlds. Best of both worlds and at a reasonable cost or, or at least reasonable time frames to get it put in because you've already got a footprint in place that you can leverage. The move to fixed wireless is a little different application of the, the technology. Does that, what, what does that mean for a, somebody who's had uh, wireless focused on mobility? It means, uh, A, densification. So you got to get you know, a lot closer to that customer. But then once you do, if you um, get the last mile to work or last 100 meters in some cases, then you can leverage that backbone. If you get it off the radio and onto the fiber as soon as possible, you idle up spectrum for everybody else. So it is, uh, it, it is very something we feel is, it will be very advantageous for us.